All right, now the second part of the question is, um, is there some accelerated theta burst like version um, as, uh, as well for low frequency treatment? Okay, so accelerated does not mean theta burst. I know that with accelerated TMS that we use for depression, we use theta burst stimulation, but that's not exclusively uh, for the word accelerated. Accelerated means just you know doing things faster, okay? Uh, now, I'm gonna break the question is, does theta burst uh, work for um, an anxiety? Okay, and the answer is yes. There is a particular theta burst, which is continuous theta burst uh, stimulation that could work for an anxiety. Okay, so let's take a step backwards a little bit and understand the physiology of the brain. Okay, uh, and I'm going to use the word stimulation here, even when it's inhibitory. Okay, so let's think of our brain, our neurons, similar to how we think about our muscles, right? You know, so. If I want to like grow my biceps, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to do a few, a few reps for a set, I'm gonna take a break, I'm going to repeat the same thing, I'm gonna take a break, I'm going to repeat the same thing, I'm gonna go home, right? I'm gonna repeat the same thing after two days. So I go to the gym for about three times a week, I'm doing things repetitively in sets, that will stimulate my muscles to grow, okay? So if I have a hypoactive area of my brain, let's say that this is the left DLPFC, the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and for this reason, I have no control over my limbic system for deeper structures of the brain, and I want to stimulate that area to take control so I can get out of depression, I can stimulate it if I do things intermittently, repetitively, and with breaks in between. So there is one video that I'm making for our uh, for, for healthcare providers, you know, kind of explain in the TMS protocols. Technically, when we do 10 hertz, that means that we're delivering 10 pulses in a second, and we're doing that for four seconds on, then 11 seconds off for the DASH protocol. So technically, we're delivering 40 pulses in the duration of four seconds, and then we're taking a break of 11 seconds. We're repeating the same thing. We're doing that 75 times over 18 minutes or so, okay? patient is going home, they're coming the next day, they're repeating the same thing, okay? That will induce neuroplasticity in, in, in the brain. That will tell the brain, hey, we gotta grow, right? Because, you know, this guy is actually using us, right? You know, that, that stimulation is actually making us, you, you know, we have to adapt, basically. Exact same principle, very similar principle to how the muscle is going to grow over time because I'm stimulating the muscle over time, okay? All right. So what if my problem wasn't really depression, my problem was an anxiety? We know that they're comorbid, that they could come together. So the theory here is that maybe my right DLPFC, uh, and by the way, when I point to my left and to my right, sometimes my editor is actually flipping the screen, so it might look like I don't know where my left and what, where, where my right is. Uh, I, I do know that. <laughs> so I'm aware of it. Hopefully you're aware of it, okay? So if there's a, a conversion in the right and left, you know, during editing of the video, so hopefully you're aware of that, okay? So hypoactivity of the left brain caused me depression. But because of that, then my right hemisphere, my right brain, looks as if it's overactive. So I could get an anxiety with my depression. So to treat that anxiety, I either need to lift up the left brain, you know, activate my left brain, or I need to inhibit my right brain, okay? So that's the, basically the theory after using low-frequency right-sided TMS, okay? Because I could actually inhibit the right hemisphere or the right DLPFC and that could help with anxiety and it could help with depression as well. So there had been some data doing, you know, just low frequency right DLPFC treatment and that helped with depression. All right. So why low frequency? What is one hertz? One hertz meaning one click per second. So when you're on the machine, the machine will sound like click, click, click. So it's basically just like a clock ticking. Okay. It's one click every second. That's what one hertz means. Okay. And then we do that for those 15 minutes or so. Now, because you are stimulating, stimulating continuously, you're gonna exhaust that area and it would lead to inhibitory uh, reaction, okay? This is similar to if I did not tell you to do it in sets, I told you continue pushing, continue doing ribs, more more, more ribs of your muscles until, until you're completely in muscle exhaustion, right? What is going to happen to you? You can barely drive your car back home because you're so you know, uh, week um, after after that training. You did not do it in sets and you did not do it repetitively, right? So doing it in sets and repetitively was activating. Doing it continuously was actually inhibitory, right? So that's what happens in the brain when we do continuous um, uh, low-frequency TMS, okay? All right. So 
That's the theory behind one hertz. So can we use theta per stimulation to do the same thing? So if you remember, theta per stimulation was triplets of a pulse at 50 hertz. Those are three pulses repeated. Those bundles are repeated in five hertz. That's where the word theta comes from because it's five hertz, five per second. Then for two seconds, and then a break of eight seconds, and then we repeat the same thing for 20 times, right? So if we use theta per stimulation, meaning those you know, triplets of pulses, right, at that frequency of 5 hertz, but we don't stop, we just continue throughout the time, right, then this is continuous theta per stimulation, okay, and continuous theta per stimulation would be inhibitory as well, same principle, you're not stopping, so you're continuing to activate or to cause action potential in that area, it's going to get to a refractory period when it's going to be inhibitory, okay. So how long does that take? You know, usually, you know, there are a couple of protocols for that one. The most common one is just doing 40 seconds of continuous theta per stimulation on the right DLPFC and that would calm the patient down. Another way to do this is two minutes on of continuous theta per stimulation, one minute off a break, and then do two minutes on uh, of theta per stimulation, okay? So that total takes only five minutes. So it's either 40 seconds or five minutes. It's really short, right? Is there a point in doing that repetitively? I'm not aware of any clinical studies that did that, okay? All right, so one more question in your questions. I'm gonna get to it in the next video. Disclaimer. Although I am a psychiatrist, this is not a professional advice as I am not familiar with the specifics of your unique situation. Please contact the psychiatrist in your area with more questions. This disclaimer is added to my answers on social media after consulting with the American Psychiatric Association. Thank you.